Hello. Yeah. In the previous video, we had seen that the control lies in the outbound profile and inbound profile, which we had assigned in the site masters. Okay. So in this video, we'll see what is exactly there in the outbound profile and the inbound profile. Okay. Let us go to SPRO. In the SPRO, it doesn't. You cannot find that in the logistics general. Okay, instead you can see that in the system distribution POS interface. Okay, here you have the outbound and inbound. Okay, so we know that each POS is a separate entity by itself. Okay, so they speak a different language or they have their different capacity. Okay. Whereas SAP has a different capacity. So when you are communicating, well, you have to modify or make some provisions so that you can interpret, so that the SAP can interpret what POS wants, or SAP has to interpret what POS has sent. Okay, so this is what we normally call as the POS profile. Okay, we go to adjustments, conversions. Okay, we have the conversion categories. Conversion category is nothing but a four-digit alphanumeric code. It doesn't have any control associated with that. Okay, so you can define anything. And you have to add the parameters for the conversion categories. The best working conversion category is SAPD or TRNG that came with the standard settings. So what does this parameter say about? It says convert unit of measure. Okay, in SAP you have unit of measures like EA, PCS, kind of. Your your POS system need not have the same unit of measure defined there itself. Okay, so when you are sending EA from SAP, you are saying here convert EA into the equivalent there. So it could be EC or zero one or any other code or EACH each as itself in their POS system. Okay, convert unit of measure. Convert the transaction type. So here we have the transaction types, and the PO system may have an equivalent to that. Okay. Similarly, convert the condition types. We have the condition type PR zero zero for prices, VKP zero for the sales price, and the VKP for the promotion price. Okay. The equivalent of VKP O will be something else in the PO system. Okay. So. If that is the case, you have to map the conversion saying that my VKPO is equal to your PR00 or like in anything, let us say number, your 9001 kind of. Okay. Convert languages. You can map for converting the movement types, tax codes. Okay. Transaction types, merchandise categories, payment methods, currency code conversion, as well as the tax classification conversion. Okay, so whether you want to convert this or not, you can make this decision after seeing the capability of your POS system. If a POS system is able to handle certain functionalities, and if it still needs the change, then you have to mark this as change needed or not. Okay. So we had. So many conversion types, right? So for each of them, we have to make the entries here. For receipt-based sales, this is my conversion category. So this is my conversion category, TRNG. Okay. So in that, my transaction GAFT. Has its equivalent in POS as two three zero two. Okay. Similarly, I am having this 
voucher functionality. Okay, TTVO is for handling the voucher. This is a condition type for handling the voucher. So, which the POS is having a VOUC. Okay, so here you define the in, in simple words, you are saying you are maintaining the translations between the POS and the SCP. Similarly, you are saying for the movement type, if anything is there. Okay. For example, I can say for my PRNG training, my movement type is 251, but my POS movement type is 001. Okay, so this is what. So whenever I make any transactions using the type 251, it will be updated as the movement type 001 in the POI system. So without knowing whether the POI system has these functionalities, it's not necessary or it's not needed to maintain those entries. Okay. For transaction types, conversion. Same applies for the transaction type conversion. So most of them will be like you do that only when you understand what uh, the POS capability is. Okay, so this is just like that uh, created. Unit of measure conversion. Okay. So this is my unit of measure. So this is um, okay, and its description is so and so. Similarly, you can maintain the conversion for material group. Material group is the merchandise category. If I have a merchandise category WWMEN, the POS system will have a equivalent something else. So you have to make that link here. Okay, so in the conversion part, you have to define and maintain all the translations that are needed. And in the conversion parameters, you are going to say what are the conversions, what are the activities that need to be converted when you are sending a data to SAP. Okay, so this is in the outbound profile. It's not the inbound. Okay, so once you have defined these uh, conversions, it has to be assigned in the outbound profile. Okay. In the outbound profile, we are using this conversion category. All the parameters which we had maintained there, just now we saw that are assigned here. Okay. And this is the lead time. So, when you are sending the data to the POI system, how often you should send the data from SAP? Okay, so, so if a market has five, it says like I will send the data once in five days. If you want to send it on daily basis, mark it as one. Okay, and condition type group. So we had seen that we have lot of condition types. Okay, when you are sending the condition types to QA system, you have the option to combine all the condition types which you will be sending into one group and you can assign this. Okay. The important prerequisite is that the condition type which you are grouping here and sending it to the POS must be contained in the pricing procedure or the pricing schema which is going to come back to you and create the billing documents. Okay, because billing documents contain the pricing procedure. The pricing procedure will contain some condition types. So whatever you are sending here must be present in that pricing procedure. Okay, if you, the, pricing, the condition group, condition types which are sending here are not contained in the pricing group, mm, pricing procedure. So obviously when it is coming back from POIS, There won't be any value for the condition, there won't be any condition records for those condition type present in the schema. So it will fail. It will not create any building document. Okay. So you have to maintain the condition groups 
accordingly. Okay. Then, what is the scope of sending data? Okay. For example, when you are sending the data, whether you want to send only the uh, all, whether you want to send all the data or you want to send only certain, uh, what to say, certain fields which is like you are reducing the data. You are reducing the data and send it. Okay. So it says like do not prepare material. Okay. Do not prepare a POS receipt text. It means don't send the descriptions. Don't send merchandise categories. Don't send follow on items. Don't send the store, store specific data. Okay. If you uncheck everything, I mean uh, check this thing, even though you have a sales set, the system will not send the sales set to this particular store which contains this outbound profile. Okay. If you market as no receipt text, there will be a short text in the material master, if you go to the material, open one material master. In the material master, there will be a POS specific short text. Okay. So there will be a POS specific short text. If you have maintained this and, but you have marked it as no POS specific text, Whatever you had maintained here will not be transferred to the outbound, uh, sorry, outbound POS. Okay. So basically you have to choose what are the data you don't want to send because either the POS cannot handle it or you might want to reduce the load on your interfaces when you are sending the data from SAP to POS system. Okay, so you have to choose what are the things you want to send. Okay. So person master reduction is like when we create users, we create uh, users for logon, uh, for interfaces. Okay. So who is the user you are going to assign for handling this interface and what should be the message type you are going to use for sending the Reduce the material master. Okay. Other than that, whether you want to send transfer metal group, factory calendars, or whatever it is. Okay. And here you can see recipient determination. Whether when you are triggering the material master, whether the system wants to look like this material is a part of this particular assortment type. And whether this store is containing that assortment type, assortment list type, okay. So it will carry out a recipient determination. Okay, if you enable recipient determination, all the master data will not go to the all the sites. Okay. So for initialization, it won't be a wise choice. Okay. However, depending on the business scenario, you might want to go whether you need to have a recipient determination or not. Okay. So once you have designed this profile, you have to assign it to the material master, sorry, site master. Okay. So now how the link is, in the site master, you have this outbound profile. This outbound profile depends, I mean, determines what are the data you have to send to the POS. Okay. Uh, what are the data uh, you have to convert? before you send to the POS, if something has to be converted, what are those things that need to be converted and in how many days, for every how many days you have, this has to prepare and send the data to POS, okay, that is a lead time and what are the things you can avoid sending it to reduce the material master, okay. So these are the things that are controlled by the outbound profile which you are assigning in the site master. Okay. So outbound profile is pretty much simple where you define the conversions and the lead times and you say what are things you need not send explicitly. Okay, if you don't mark anything, the system will try to send everything. Okay. 
and next one is the intone profile similar very similar you have the intone profile so here in, in you define the intone profile it is nothing but a four letter uh, key that doesn't have any control okay so based on that profile you are going to define all the further activities Okay, so let us start with the profile for distributing coupon discounts. Okay, so when you are creating coupon discounts, so you create the merchandise article with the merchandise uh, sorry article type C O U P and uh, the corresponding merchandise category. Okay. So it is just like your vouchers or the discount coupons or discount codes when you apply I mean like which you apply when you are checking out during a checkout transaction okay so for example like they will say like okay um, so when you are uh, buying online during checkout apply this code ww10 you will get a 10 percentage of discount okay so that ww10 is nothing but a material or article in SAT detail created Using the article type COUP and the appropriate merchandise category. Okay, that is an article, but that is not a physical article. Okay, it is an intangible article which has its own value. Okay, so because of which it is like adding that material during the sales order, your sales activity. It is like you are adding that material, but that value will be a negative value of minus 10. Okay, so when you add that, it will automatically, I mean the transaction will seem like having a discount applied. Okay, so when you are processing the coupons from uh, POS, okay, you can define those coupons in the POS level also. Okay, if you have defined them in POS and if it is coming to SAP then you can split that coupon into a maximum of three okay a maximum of three condition types so that you can assign those things into different cost objects okay the discount need not always go into a single uh, cost object are a single general ledger account. It can always be split. For example, like I am uh, running this promotion. Okay, so I am giving a discount of 10, uh, 10 euros per transaction. Okay, it's not necessary that I have to bear that expense of 10 euros all by myself. So there are others also who are getting the benefit of this promotion. My vendor, my vendor will have uh, what to say his brand awareness or increased or due to this promotion his market share is increasing. So obviously he also has to take that responsibility. Okay. And uh, I have a uh, well, let us say my promotion team. Okay. So their activity is only about the uh, creating the awareness. Okay. So they will have their promotional budget. Okay, so I can claim a part of my discount or part of my loss which I made through this discount. I can claim a share from my marketing department. I can claim a part of my loss from the discount from my vendor. Okay, so you can define a maximum of three cost objects when you are importing the coupon related data or coupon discounts from the POS system. Okay. The however the criteria is like all the shares okay put together must be equal to zero. For example, like if you are using only uh, two objects, then it should be fifty fifty or sixty forty. Okay, it should put together be one hundred. Okay. Condition type this account key helps in determining the appropriate general ledger accounts in the account determination of the billing document.
Okay. So this is how you control at your inbound profile controls the coupons when you are when you are taking the data from the POS into SAP. Okay. Checking rules. Checking rules is basically uh, when you are uh, what to say taking the data from uh, POS just because the data uh, like what to say just because the data in POS cannot be viewed physically from SAP, it doesn't mean that any data can be sent in POS. Okay. So you can enable certain check controls or check rules when the data is coming from POS to SAP. Okay. So during one of our simulation I told like uh, we have to make sure that the POS controller is given the proper user ISR2 because in this case I use ISR2 because uh, once I tried with a different team, it failed, saying that the POS controller not found. Okay. Then I found that this is because of this. Okay. You can set certain things like my POS controller is going to be my uh, user. Okay. Uh, the store number is going to be my partner. The POS, it may have a different store number. Okay. But as per my SAP, the store is W102. So that is my partner. If something is being sent from POS, it should not contain their uh, non sap value. So it should contain W001. So then only the system says, okay, partner number is there. Okay, it is working. I mean, like it is valid. Then it will pass. If else, it will give you an error saying that the data is not found, I mean, not correct, so that it will not process or it will result in a failed dialog. Okay. So this is the functionality of the checking rules for the POS upload. Okay. We come to the aggregated sales control. Aggregated sales is like uh, like we had seen. We are not breaking the sales into uh, POS sales into individual transactions. So we are just consolidating everything that happened on that day, um, like what you had sold, how many quantities you had sold, and for what value. Okay. Then you are updating that in the SAP. So in a store W one zero two I have my QOS inbound profile S A T D. So let me use this profile for all my so S A T D it says okay. Do the inventory management without aggregation. Billing with billing document saved. Okay. Create a billing document and integrated replenish based inventory management. So whenever you are running a um, aggregated sales control, your inventory gets updated. So that change in inventory is picked in the replenishment control. So when you have a MRP run, that is the materials requirement planning run, these exhausted quantities or consumed quantities is Considered and the system executes a forecast and creates a stock transfer order for the consumed quantity. Okay, for example, like you have 50 pieces uh, on that store and you have a safety stock of, let me see, 40. Which means if your safety stock falls below 40, then the system should create a stock transfer order for the quantity to make up up to that 40. Okay. So let us select there are, uh, I consumed the 30 pieces. Okay. So my stock fell to 20. Okay. Which means uh, 20, I need 20 more pieces to maintain the safety stock. Okay. So when I run the, uh, carry out the MRP run, the system will create a STO for 20 pieces automatically. So that the safety stock is automatically maintained. Okay. So whether this kind of update has to be man managed for the aggregated sales, then you have to mark it as needed. Okay. What are the other update systems? Because you have sales information systems, SIS. You have logistical information systems, LIS. 
you have retail information system RIS, okay, you have business warehouse BW, okay. So what are the things that has to be updated as a result of this particular transaction, okay. So we need only RIS update, okay. And when I carry out this transaction, is there any anonymous customer, okay. So anonymous customer is basically to populate the customer field by default, okay. If there is any, anything, you can assign it here, you can leave it blank. And I had maintained this, so actually it was not there, but whenever I try to uh, create fabricated cells, Sometimes I used to get errors like uh, material not found in phones or storage location. Then I have to update that in the uh, IDOC level and then reprocess it. To avoid that, I have maintained the default storage location as 001. So that whenever this agricultural states control is executed, the stock is taken from the storage location 001 and updated. Okay. So this is what the movement type. So, if you remember in the previous video, when we executed that aggregated sales, I then we checked the material document. We had noticed that it has been issued in the movement type 251. Okay. Of all the movement types existing in the system, why did the particular transaction take the 251? Because in this profile, we had marked that for all the sales activities, mark it in the movement type 251. If it is returned, if you are, I mean, that is the issue. If the customer is returning material, okay, then you mark it with the movement type 252. Okay. This explode article is when you have a sales set, a bill of materials. They might, the POS might send only the bill of material header. Okay. But when it comes to SAP, whether the bill of material has to be exploded or not, that is controlled by this. Okay. And when it comes and creates a document in SAP, it will, it, I mean, we have seen that it created a billing type, a billing document and a material document. Okay. Sometimes if you needed that, if your business says, no, I just don't want only the material document. I need a full-fledged OTC document set. OTC is in order to cash. That is, you need, you need a sales order, you need a delivery, and an invoice. If that is the case, what are the document types that should be used? Okay. OR is the standard sales order. DLN is the creation of delivery. Uh, but you create the delivery of type LO without referencing any order and it determines the item category DLM. Okay, so that is the reason we are saying uh, this should be updated with the item category DLM and the billing type should be of type FP. Okay, so if we go to the billing document, what is the billing document we created in the last 74 or 73? See, billing POS interface 9074 FP. This document FP came because in the inbound profile for aggregated sales, we had said create a billing document of type FP. Okay. And calculation schema. Calculation schema is nothing but the pricing procedure. So in the billing document, what should be the, what is the pricing procedure assigned? I select that I go to the conditions analysis. POS 00, because this billing document fetches or uses the pricing procedure called POS 00, which contains these condition types. Okay. So here in the inbound profile, we had instructed that use this document type and use this pricing procedure so that you can calculate the pricing based on this. Okay. And number of items, what is the maximum number of items you can include in a aggregated sales? So we have controlled it as 100. Okay. And when you are creating the aggregated billing document, the 
the value which you are entering there as the sales price should be updated in some condition type, right? So that is updated. The seventy five is updated in the condition type E and ten. Okay. So once again, like all of all the condition types available, why the system chose to populate the seventy five euros in E and ten? Because in my profile, I had maintained that. It should be maintained. That the sales price should be maintained in P and N. Okay. For valuating the price, it should be updated in the condition type P B E W. And for F I valuation price, it should be updated in P B F I. Okay. So this is what made the aggregated sales to pick the moment type two fifty one, pick the billing type F P, and choose the pricing percentage T Y S zero zero. And populate the condition type P N N. Okay, so that all is because of this particular um, entries. Okay, we will see the further of aggregated sales control. Um, control side are other aspects. Okay, that's it. Okay, uh, further controls for the aggregated sales are the summarized sales. Yes. Yeah? SAPD is my store. So whether you want to have the inventory management, I enabled this because I wanted to test the containment scenario. Okay, containment is the material can lie with either vendor or customer, but it is not their property. For example, if I am a vendor and you are the customer, I had left some of the material in your premises because. You can access that material whenever you need. This happens mostly in the JIT, a just-in-time scenario, or the most world-famous Kanban scenario. Okay, so all the vendors place their material at the premises of the customer. Okay, so the customer, whenever they need it, they consume the material from the vendor stock, and so because of which the customer doesn't. uh doesn't need to uh, block their money in the inventory okay so the material is physically available in their uh, premises but still it is not there so they are not uh, what to say so they are not uh, blocking their money into the inventory similarly if uh okay so this can apply to either both the vendors as well as the customers So that is concept is called as consignment. Okay, if you want the stores to have the consignment functionality, then you can enable it. I enable it for one of the testing. There is for other scenarios, for the other profiles, it is not there. K S K S. Then you have the payment list control. CPD. So it basically says what are all the condition types you have to use. So this is what we have seen in the previous uh, FT billing aggregated sales. Okay. Now we control to the uh, come to the controls of the sales per receipt. So where each transaction in POI system is updated in the SAP system with its reference. Okay. What is the reference number? Who made that sale? From which terminal the sale was made? All those kind of things. Okay. So here, if I go to SAPD, so it is also similar like to that. The outbound profile. Okay, but only thing, the inventory management document creation that was not here. That option is not here, but it has been checked. Okay. Then you have the what to what information system to update RAS or BI. B W R both, okay, and the other things also pretty much the same. Movement types, and it is everything the same as the aggregated sales. Okay, further control for the receipt based sales or the sales with reference here. Mark whether you need the consignment or not. Yes, I need that. Good movement control. Okay, so 
So what should happen when there is a CUS goods movement? Okay. So whether uh, like um, you need to terminate after the if the PO is not created or generated. Okay. Then you still control the transaction types for sales as per receipt. That is a receipt based sales. Okay, here you had defined what are all the transaction types, and this is what we had maintained in the. We had seen that in the conversion, uh, conversion rules for the outbound profile. Okay, so there you had seen uh, what is the transaction type and what is the POS equivalent for that. Okay, so that is what we had defined here. So SAPD is what we are seeing. Okay. So here I am saying if 2001 is the transaction, then it should update the inventory management, but it should not update my MRP thing. Okay. And I need to create a billing document based on that and use the movement type 251 for goods issue, 250 for return. And item category for delivery is DLN. Because based on this item category only, you will be able to mark a particular line item as a billing or not. Similarly, you can do it for other transactions also. Okay. We'll see for 2002. So one the thing is employee returns. Here you could see that reversal till received. It can be reversed in the till. Okay. And the gift certificate, it's uh, the payment method should be uh, checked or updated. So returns as it is again reversal till receipt. For rack jobber, you see there is a consignment. The material is still available in my in our premises, but it is not our property. It is still the vendor. So whenever I need it, I will ask the vendor, okay, I, I, I need ten pieces, the vendor will issue me ten pieces. That ten pieces is my property, then I will consume that or I will sell it. Okay. So that is the consignment process. Okay. So, in case of rack job or transaction, yes, it should be posted to the consignment, vendor consignment, and you could see the movement types change for the, movement types and the item categories change for the sales activities and the return activities. Okay, so this is how you control the transaction types for the sales services. In the goods movement, like in the previous simulation demo when we saw, we saw that I entered the number 351 or something, okay, it failed, the parameters mean like it's not maintained, then I changed the value to 301, it, uh, uh, it accepted because of this one, okay. So here I had maintained that if I am using this Inbound profile, SAPD, what are the movement types I can allow to happen? Okay. 351 is not there, so that is the reason why they applied. I mean, like when I tried with 351, I got that error. Okay. Transaction type for financial, financial transactions. Okay. Here you just give the keys. Okay, no control here. The controller has to be done in the next one. Transaction type dependent of financial controls. SAPD is mine. Okay. So this is where I have to see what, oh, there is no SAPD. That is the reason we got failed. Okay. So what I can do is, let me copy these stuff. Okay. 
So let me take a screenshot of it so that we can, before we wind up the session, we will retry that again. Okay, store order control is what we did so that the system created the stock transfer order requesting for the material. Okay, the st store is placing the order. Okay. So how does the system know that when it places, when, uh, when, a, when it triggers a STO that should be consolidated into and sent to the external vendor, when it is sending to external vendor, it should be of type NB and uh, it should be internally delivered with the delivery type UL because of these controls. Okay, so your inbound profile says what should be the delivery type and what should be the vendor type and in case of how the system should behave in case of uh, external replenishment or internal replenishment. Okay, and uh, when it is selecting the vendors, when there are so many vendors available for the same material, what kind of things it has to consider? Okay, check the, I mean, uh, go for the cheapest source or check double PO if your PO exists for this material already. Okay, switch off document so you will not be able to link the preceding document with the succeeding document. Okay, so all these things are controlled by the inbound profile when you are creating the store order. Store order is nothing but the stock transfer order. Okay. Then we have the physical inventory control. Yes, of course, we didn't see that because uh, we don't have the inventory document as well as the sales price change for certain materials. I will try that when I have time in future. So if I do that, I will definitely keep you updated. Then the enhancement for the store physical inventory control. Is there anything else? Okay, do not create physical just. Okay, fine. Okay, so these are all the controls or the recent, sorry, so these are the things uh, in your outbound and inbound profile that controls the movement of data, a flow of data from SAP to POS and POS to uh, SAP, that is inbound. Okay, so like what I can suggest is like you can create your own inbound profiles and outbound profiles and play around with this stuff. Okay, add it to your site and then you can play around with these things. Okay, so only thing frustrating thing I felt when I was checking in the uh, simulation was I didn't know what the qualifier was initially when I checked. Okay, so when I started, I didn't know what was the qualifier. So I just thought it, is, it was the serial number, so I used to pop it 001, 002, or 1, 2, like that. Okay, so based on that, whenever I tried, uh, I ended up getting errors, so like it used to be very frustrating. And uh, one day I accidentally found out, like, you know, the qualifiers are different, that you have to use 006, or uh, in some cases you need to use ARTNR, okay. So that is the only thing, okay. So that is the reason, uh, like when you are trying this so simulation again, you go through this video once again, uh, and based on that, you do your practice, okay. And um, okay, so before we wind up, so let us just check this financial transaction based on the screenshot we had taken, W102. Okay, so reference number, okay, and I'm seeing, okay, so what should be the transaction type? I think um, 3ABA won't work out. Okay, so 3, 2, 2, R, A, B, S, C, A, B, S, C, 
Okay, have a great weekend and have a good practice. Bye.